What's going on people? Welcome to GFX Capture. In today's video, I'm going to talk about how we can use camera tool, the 3D gizmos in After Effects that were introduced in the 2021 version and how do we use all of these collectively to animate our composition. So without further ado, let's have a look. So as you can see in my project, I have two compositions, actually pre-comps and one background layer. Okay, the first thing I want to do is to make these two pre-comps, which is this one and this one, turn them into a 3D layer. The way we do it is we click on this 3D icon and in the in this box, we just tick once. And this makes it into a 3D object. Now, of course, it hasn't done much, but obviously we need to do a few more things to it. Now, in the views panel, we are going to work with two views only. You can also change it to four views if you like. Okay, it will look something like this. So you have more options and you can see from different angle. But I think two would be enough for us. Now, by default, the first one is always set to active camera. On this side, this is set to left view and you can change it from this view here. So you can look at it from the front, the top, the back, right, bottom and custom views as well you can also create your own 3d view as well so if there is a particular pro object that you want to look at from a specific angle you can also set your own or you can also create your own 3d view here as well now when we are working with the front left top back right or bottom views these are called orthographic views what this simply means is that it does not have perspective or depth to it. So now if I select any of these objects, we will see that some additional information and controls will appear. How you do that is simply either click on one of these compositions or you can also click on one of these objects as well, depending on what you want to work with, what you need to work with. So if I click on this, for example, now I will have these other options here that will appear. The first thing is x-axis, which is the red. Y-axis is represented by the, the green color, the vertical one, and the, the Z or the Z um, depth is by this blue color. Now, if I want to move any of these, I simply drag and move them, okay? And the pink line here actually represents how much you have moved from, from the original position. And you can also see the X, Y, and Z position here as well. Okay, so that's what we can do. If I want to move it up, there you go. I can do that and I can push this back in space. Now, obviously we have this line, which is this composition. We can also work with this if you want and we can bring this forward. So as you can see, if I bring this forward, the active in the active view camera, this will look bigger and that will look smaller because I have pushed this one back in the, the Z space or in the Z space. Okay, there we go. I can push it even back, even more. You can also rotate this object as well. So just by clicking and, and, and dragging down, you can actually change the, the angle of them. Okay. And if you press and hold shift and then move it, it will move it by 45 degree increments okay there we go and you have all of these options here as well so you have the universal gizmo and then you have the position gizmo the scale and the rotation you can select each of them separately or individually but i like to work with the universal one because then i get all of them in the same uh, gizmo you can also use the keyboard shortcuts for this as well and you can also in fact change or disable them if you need to the way you do it is go to your file and go to go to edit sorry and go to preferences and go to journal And in the 3D option right at the bottom, here you can use the camera navigation. So the use one, two, three for navigation, four, five, six for transform gizmos is selected. If you don't want to use this, just simply untick them. Okay. Next, I want to change the left view to the perspective view. Okay. For that, what I will do is simply come here make sure that this is selected the, the the left one and 
how you find this is if you see those four blue markers on each corner that means this view is selected if you go to the active camera and click on here then these four um, markers will appear here so just click on the, the left uh, camera and then go to the camera view and just select the custom view one okay oh somehow this changed to a 2d layer so i'll make it to 3d there we go so now we can see a perspective view of this essentially what we are saying is that we can see this in in the space in the 3d space the distance between them the gap between each of them and we can also see from a different angle as well if we want okay so if i want to for example click on there and I want to rotate it in the y-axis okay so I'll simply click on this green line and then I can push it up or down okay there we go and I can change it in the X on the X axis as well there we go I can do that on the Y like this okay or I can push it back in space and there you go and you can clearly see on this side it becomes smaller because I've just pushed it back in space this one is the same size I can push it to the front if I want okay now if you have some basic knowledge of After Effects you will know that rendering is a big problem especially if your PC or Mac is not a high spec or it cannot handle complex compositions and animations it may slow down your rendering process as well in this option here in the 3d we can actually put all our composition into a draft 3d composition what this will mean is that it will actually make your rendering a lot faster it does this in real time and it makes all the changes in real time so when you render it the lag time will be a lot shorter when you want to view them now there's another option here just next to this draft 3d which is the the ground plane it essentially helps you and works as a reference point more than anything really um, when you when you have different uh, compositions or objects and you're working with 3d lights or camera and want to position all of the objects in a, in a certain angle or at a certain level it just helps you make all of all of those things put together in in the right places now in this case when you have the black background and in case you have dark objects or compositions which may not be very visible on the black background of course what you can easily and simply do is to go to your composition settings and simply change the background color from a black or a dark background whatever you've chosen by default to something a bit lighter okay so i'm going to change it to sort of almost white color and there you go my now i can see if there were any dark um, uh, compositions or objects i would actually be able to see them easily and i think just light background is much more nicer as well you can easily see all of uh, um, all of your compositions and objects um, in your 3d pane so now it's kind of easy to work with these all right if i go to i'm just gonna zoom in a bit on these ones okay and if i want to bring this GFX capture um, composition a bit forward what I'll simply do is that I'll bring this drag this here on the Z axis or the Z axis and I'm just gonna push it to the right so I can actually either do it from here which is this X axis or I can do it from here it's exactly the same thing you're just looking at it from a different uh, angle okay I can do that here I can even do it more so now on this one you can actually see where it stands on the orthographic view but also you can actually see from the active camera or from the front how much it's actually covering the composition in the background okay there you go and then I can actually change the x-axis so I can actually rotate it basically okay I can I can tilt it to I can tilt it and and make it lean forward I can actually push it back and so that it's kind of like leaning back okay and also I can push it up there you go okay whatever you want to do with it but it gives you what I'm trying to say is that it gives you a much power a lot more power in terms of placing and visualizing 
what your composition is actually going to look like in the end. Now you can also use the camera navigation tools here at the top as well. Okay, just individually if you want to select any of these, for example, this one which is the orbit around or you can go to the pan and recursor tool or you can go to the, the dolly um, gizmo as well. Okay, you can either do that and you can just use that tool to perform that particular function. And you can use the short uh, keyboard shortcuts as well again, one, two, three. So one, it will go to this one, two, it will go to the pan under, and three, it will go to the dolly gizmo or the dolly tool. So remember we are doing all of this without even adding the actual camera into the composition yet. So as, as I said, this new After Effects options are very, very useful and powerful. You can do a lot more before you even add a camera to it as well. Okay. Now that we understand how the basic movement of these objects and compositions work using these 3D gizmos, we are going to animate these compositions or these objects. Okay. So for that, what I'm going to do is to switch this camera to the, the top view. Okay. What that will do for me is to help me understand where exactly each of these objects are. And I can animate them easily. So what I'm going to do is let's say if I select both of them. Okay. And I want to rotate them. What I'll do is I just press R on the keyboard. And let's say I want to rotate them on the Y axis. So if I just start adding, uh, sorry, rotating these two, what I can clearly see is that there, there is a conflict. The conflict is that they overlap. These objects will overlap in my animation. As you can see right here, these two objects overlap. And depending on the animation, you may not like this to happen. So to avoid that, and, and this is why I've actually chosen the, the top view, so that I can see clearly if there is going to be an overlap between the objects. So the best thing to do then is I'm just going to undo them and move this one the x axis just a bit here to the left so that when they rotate they do not overlap okay and if i do it now select both of them and rotate the, the y axis for them there we go i can definitely see that there's no overlap okay and this is this is really good to to do as a as a sort of a trial run to make sure that you do not spend time later on fixing these kind of issues. So now we are ready for animation. So what I'll do, both of them are selected, put a keyframe on the Y axis and rotate them, actually keep them zero over here and go up in the timeline about two seconds and rotate the Y axis something like this. Okay, so now this is our animation. If we look at it, this is our animation. And I'm going to switch back to the custom V1. Oops, not this one. I'm going to change that to, should go back to the active camera. And I'm going to change that one to the custom view one okay so if you play the animation now so now I've got my basic animation and remember I have not added a camera to it yet okay so I'm happy with this animation and this viewing angle what I'm now going to do is to create a camera go to view and go to create camera from 3d view okay there we go Now what I'm going to do is to press on 
P for the position. Click on the keyframe. So I'm going to create a keyframe and then go up in the timeline about two seconds and I'm going to change the, the view. So what I'm going to do is just change maybe something like this. Okay, so now when we play it, see we are actually that animation is already going on with with the the, the rotation on the y-axis, but we're also moving the camera angle and the perspective as well, which gives us a completely new dimension and the way how we are looking at this composition. Okay, so it becomes really a nice composition and really nice view. So this is pretty much everything. One more thing you can do just to top top it up as a icing on the cake is to press F9, key, select both of these keyframes, press F9, then go into the graph editor and you can just change the speed of it as well. Okay, so what will happen now is it will be something like this. Okay, or you can actually go the other way. So it will start off slow and then it will end up very fast. Yeah, something like this. Okay, so I hope this was a very basic but useful introduction to how the camera tools and the 3D gizmos work and how we can use them all together to collectively control the different angles of our animation and composition and how we can use all of this to create a really, really nice and compelling video. So if you are new to the channel, don't forget to subscribe, click on the bell icon, hit the like button on this video and we'll see you in the next one. Thanks, bye.